Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success, and as we aim for the top, we will pause, if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to SimSoul Sessions. Everybody and welcome to Simso Sessions. This is the safe space to share your stories. And tonight's Soul Session features entrepreneur. I wonder if she's okay with that title. There's much more to her, Yannick Barrett, who you may know better as the Curvy Diva. And tonight she wants you to meet the human being behind that moniker. And I think it will be quite the reveal. Yannick joins me now. No check-in tonight. We're heading straight into this interview because we need all the time that we can get. So I say, Holy. Oh my goodness. Hi. It's so good to see you. Oh, Jesus. It's good to be Are here. Are you nervous? Oh, like crazy. Oh, good. Like crazy. You know, as an entertainer, a little nervous energy is a good thing. Um, I think um, it's not even that. 14 years in the business and I've never opened up and, you know, talk about my life at all. So my family's like, oh. don't tell too much. <laughs> don't okay. say too much. It's well, like, you know that the story is yours to tell. It's your story. So exactly. for going anywhere that you don't want me to go, you say breaks, right? <sighs> but the floor is yours. And it's with, a safe space. And it's a safe space, yeah. Right. So thank you for coming. Um, I feel particularly connected to your story because we have a little bit of history, right? Yes. So I'm going to go back. How much years, you said? Ah, uh, 14. 14 years. years. Right before you came to work at Fame, you sought me out because you were looking for voice and speech, voice and speech coach. training because mm -hmm. you knew you wanted to get into radio. Right. right. And you came to me. And when I met you, you were a shy, um, lacking in confidence young lady mm -hmm. from a strict SJ oh. upbringing who never knew what she was getting herself into. I tell you. I tell and you. I look at that young lady. And I look at you now and I say, my God, what a journey, right? It was. It Bumps was. and bruises. I tell you. Scratches oh and God. scrapes. A whole heap. Who were you then? Oh, God. I was a people pleaser back then. You know, my family, Adventists, group Adventists. I mean, it's not even the joke Adventists. It's the real straight. <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> not, not joke. No, man. We pray every morning. We dedicated a room to God. You know, my mom did that. It's called a prayer room. So, you know, we had to wake up early morning, six o'clock from 5.30 to six to pray and to welcome God and welcome the day. And um, yeah, just my family, my sisters, my brother, father deacon, um, mother deacon is prayer warrior for the church. So she's the person that if you have a problem, you go to. So talk about streak and then she was a principal, so it was no. And you leeway. were you were nothing. preaching in the church too? Oh Lord, no? of course. By the time you were twelve? From no, from I was six I used to testify and win souls for Jesus. That is mommy thing. Yes, man. Come and go and win some soul for Jesus, crusade and all of these things. So I was testifying and then I started preaching as well. So that started when I was about ten, eleven. I baptized at about six or seven. I never even know all of these, you know what I mean? Boy, but you know, I love God and mm -hmm. I love my family and this is the way it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I baptized again um, at 12, you know, we moved to our next church. So it was just, I, I knew nothing. And my mother, because she wanted to keep us into that fall, I went to prep school, Adventist prep school, Adventist high school, Adventist college. <laughs> so I eat, breathe and sleep. Literally. You know? Yes. I swear to God. So my principal would be my Bible school teacher. I'm like, you know, everybody's there. We weren't going outside. There was no temptation for me to say, boy, I want to go this or party or do anything because it was, I don't want to say cult, but it kind of was. Strict. Yeah, man. So is that, strict. is that the reason why you became the curvy diva? Because when you look at the transition now and people say, or hear you talk about this, Yannick, and look at the artist mm -hmm. you became... 
um, kind of like free. No business, oh no, like the other extreme to the no. point of criticism, like, is this girl, oh what is this girl doing? God, Does she not have morals? Does she not have... I know, listen, all of these things. So I mean, how do you reach them. there, so? Um, I said to myself, you know what, I love music. And apart from that, I love entertainment. So I like hosting and doing that. So I normally do it at school. I don't fight against it at school, you know, because I remember I wanted to keep... Um, modeling, you know, show and all of these things. And they're like, no, 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 we don't allow that. And I say, really? I go and I get some of my sister clothes. <laughs> and in the middle of the barbecue that we have, and everybody going up talent show and everything, I group a couple of my friends, carry them in the bathroom, put them in my sister clothes, and say, we're going to do this modeling thing. And we put on one piece of something, and the principal nearly have a heart attack. She's mm -hmm. like, Lord Jesus, this child, this child. I can't I pray over so you. So I pray. Yeah. And I was just like, listen, I wanted to be free. I wanted to do what? I didn't see, you know, it being a problem. Mm -hmm. Fashion should not be a problem. You know what I mean? So I always rebel. I always. And um, I wasn't disrespectful in doing it. My mother said, you know, Yannick will never say, you know, no or yes or be rude. Me just do it. Yeah. And then I said, I'm sorry afterwards, but, you know, me just do it. But are you sorry about... No. Kirby Diva, you're, you're no. not sorry about no, that. No, That's no, something no. you wanted to do. Something I wanted to Some do. Some people say you went too far and you've gone too far, oh but, but especially but given your background. But what do you mm -hmm. what do you say? To um, that? How, how much is too far? I mean, it might be too far for John, and it might be okay for Peter. So what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. As long as it's okay with me, then I'm fine with that. So that was my so. next question: is how mm -hmm. it 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 felt to you? I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you're running a restaurant and you're in a different place. You don't. Um, I asked you if you're going to go back to, to art history, and we're going to talk about that. But mm -hmm. was there ever a point where you felt mm -hmm. like you had gone too far, or um, you had any regrets? When you sit here and look back, you have any regrets about how you, how you that space that you fat. entered as mm -hmm. an entertainer? Ah, uh, no, you know, mm -hmm. I think there's one instance where. I was performing and then at that point I discussed it with the DJ, discussed it with my team. I said, you know what? I'm going to mm -hmm. do all sorts of mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, so I remember. I uh, said to myself, hey man, we're going to do it. And great idea, we're going to do it. Based on the song that is playing, we're going to build that vibe. And based on even the, you know, the whole event, it, it, it's not a problem. It's not, okay, you know. So I decided to do it. And the thing is, everybody else just created such a big deal. And they were like, oh my God, she don't have this. I said, hey, it's entertainment. And if you can't, look on Halle Berry that play a role of a prostitute and call her a prostitute. So at the end of the day, if I'm entertaining and I'm saying, okay, this is something, a part of the skit, a part of the act, and I'm doing it. You know, um, I think my only regret is that I didn't document it before. So persons would realize that it's not something we just think about and do it on the mm -hmm. stage and have no morals. It's a but part of your set. It's a part of the set. Well, well, a I lot know. of things that you have done, whether you documented them or no, were documented mm -hmm. um, and caused a lot of stress and distress in Gosh. your life. Uh, we're going to talk through that journey with you. And how Yannick says she's just at a place now of perfect peace, just perfect peace. Talk to her after the break. Thank God. So we're back uh, with Yannick. Um, you were talking to us earlier about your, your mother and how she, what she wanted you to do in church, the mission that she had you on, your mother of blessed memory, by the yes. way. Um, she was a staunch defender, um, even up until yeah. the, the very end, right? And as a right. prayer warrior of the church, she got in a lot of hot water for what her, mm -hmm. her daughter was doing she to did. the point where it kind of messed up that relationship. Yeah, it did. Um, I mean, they normally question her to say, boy, you're praying for everybody. You're praying for this, you're praying for sinners, you're praying for persons to come through problems. Why you can't pray for your daughter? Like, what is happening here? And I remember she always defend me and she said, listen, you know, I pray for my daughter, put her before God. But it is, you know, God's responsibility. He's going to pull her through. So you don't count her out. You know, and she always said that. You don't count out yourself, darling. <laughs> if it is meant to be, it's going to happen. And God is going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I normally, when the, Christ the Christians come to me and they'll be like, listen, boy, I mean, I understand. You lose your soul. I say, boy, you're not supposed to understand. But leave it to God. You trust him, don't it? And if you call on him for everything, call on him, pray for me. And I always tell him, I pray for me. You call on him for me because I'm calling on him. So... 
don't stress out too much and don't hate me and judge me. Just let me be. So, but my mother said me always full of chat. So, <laughs> I guess oh, that yeah, was... But you have been was... calling on him. We're going to get to I that. Um, your mom did a lot to protect you from early, yes. Yeah, and you were saying. Um, yeah. But she couldn't be. She couldn't be with you all the time. And when you were when you were fifteen, some of her worst fears for you were realized. Oi, mm. <laughs> I said that was a good guy. Mm. All right. Um, we have we have a tissue for that. <laughs> Always. Here you go. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Lord Jesus. All right. So here is the thing. The um, right there with you. <laughs> She's here. Yes. Oh, I. I I've never spoken about it. I mean, apart from my family, <clears throat> my sisters, and um, you know, I don't if my dad know. He's gonna know now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> at 15, I, I yeah, at 15, I um, <clears throat> I decided to follow my girlfriend. So um, she was much older. Um, you know, she just came about. It was a young girl that my mom, you know, liked and stuff. So she said, boy, she's going to help her out, give her some uniforms and all of that. No, my mom, and I tell you, say, I'm sheltered. My mother is a principal, so every holiday is holiday for her too. Mm. So <laughs> you talk about, you know, getting no freedom. <laughs> so, you know, it was, I don't sleep over. I, I don't do none of that. I don't follow friends. Friends always come to the house. My mommy is just, she's known for that. And if the friend, if she see the friend and is like somebody where she feel is a waste of time, she say, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. And she is straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, listen, mm -hmm. she go to her and she say, listen, I don't like you for my daughter. Don't come back here. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So my friends had to be, you know, on the P's and Q's. But um, this particular friend, we went to the library before. And... Um, I was there not paying it any mind. This is a guy that she like, and she's there with the guy and everything, and I'm not paying it any mind. I'm 15, she 18, she doing she. The next day, you now, she said to me, um, I should come and, you know, meet up and we're going to go out. So I said, all right, we are meeting you. So I know my mother says, she want me to take taxi everywhere, all of these things. So I met the taxi man, dropped me off at one place, and that is where my mother think I am, probably mega mat or close to that area. And I said, you know what? And I walk from there and go around to where my friend is. Well. I thought she was there. When I reached, I said to myself, oh my God, you know, where are you? She's like, I come in, I come in. But her boyfriend is there in the house or the guy that she like. So I'm there waiting, watching TV, don't know what's going on. So the man come out and he's way older in his thirties. And I'm there, okay, with this big man. All right, <laughs> okay, he sit down beside me. I'm like, okay. And um, he's like, your friend, you're nice, you know, you know. I'm just like, all right. No, me definitely got to tell my friend, because you're crazy. Mm. Um, he's there, he tried, you know, attempted something and, and tried to touch me and something. So I jump up and run to the door. He's like, no, 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 stop, 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 I'm sorry. And I said to him, said, don't do that, don't do that, you know, don't. So he's like, I'm sorry. Anyways, call my friend again, can't get her, call her, can't get her. And then um, I remember he was kind of relaxed you now, watching TV. They were saying, all right, this is taking too long. Me ready for leave because my mother gave me only this space and I can have to go home soon. Long and short, the gentleman was in the room. And I said, gentleman, he was in the room. Um, so he's like, um, look here. So I said, what? So he's like, no, man, I think your friend, whatever. So I'm thinking she's trying to get him. So I went into the room saying, what happened? And that is when the door closed, and, and that is how I lost my virginity. And um, because of that, you know, the whole thing, I, at, at some point when it was happening, I kind of block out, and I said to myself, all right, then, it, it, it's not happening. I, yes, I tried to scream, and the whole, whole don't bust up my mouth, and I'm like, this, this don't make sense. Like, you're not going, like, when will it end? I, I mm -hmm. swear to God, I zoned out and went to somewhere. And it was a beach or something. I just started focusing on something in the ceiling and with the thing over my mouth and just lie there saying, okay, this soon end. You never told yeah. your mother? I never. Because my mom actually got raped and it was brutal for her. So with that, she is the type of mother because she went through that and then she could have three girls. It's like, she said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> You come, you know, she have, my brother is there, he's the first one. Um, 
But because she went through that now, it was a situation where everybody, if a, sister, a group of guys walking on the left are going right, because mommy is like, every man dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking how I grew up being so sheltered, so afraid. She's saying, listen, be careful. And she's one of them would say, oh, I got raped. This happened to me. No, make it happen to you. Da, 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 constantly. And you never told and her, and I you never. said you would never speak about it until she passed. Yeah. And you're it speaking is. about it now. Um, we're going to talk some more about um, how Yan moved from this and um, losing her mother but gaining herself. We'll be right back. I consider this chair to be a gift. Um, when I get the opportunity to speak with folks that are as Yannick says, misunderstood, and they get a chance to tell their stories. Oftentimes, a lot of things come to light and a lot of things make sense. You know what I mean? And you see a lot of hurt and a lot of trauma that people are going through. Your mom passed two years ago. Yeah. Yes. You never told her. You said you wouldn't talk about that situation until she passed. Yeah. And you, start, you stood looking at her when she... You almost had to give her permission to go. Yeah. I remember... Um Man, I, I promised myself, I didn't want her to feel like she failed because she was so hell-bent on making sure that that didn't happen to us, you know, as girls. So I just couldn't. And my sister, she, even when the person, you know, had police bridge, you know, whatever, not like all police are like that, but that happened mm -hmm. where they call and they're saying, you know, anyhow you talk. And um, I remember feeling at 15, I cannot do this. And... I don't know how to take the bullying and everything. And I remember talking to my sister and um, I told her what happened, just briefly. I didn't want to say too much and just tell her that the person calling me and whatever and that happened. And she's like, all right, um, you know, came me to the hospital and everything. And I remember I was at school too, I was in my uniform and she came into the hospital, make sure I'm good. And the person called and she dealt with it and just seeing her strength and she wasn't afraid. And she's like, um, I got you. Mm -hmm. I have you. Mm -hmm. Jan, I have you. This will not destroy you. And um, just seeing my sister's strength at 15, and um, I thought she was going to tell my mom. And she's like, no, it's not my story to tell. You just learn from this, and you know better now, and you know, don't follow friends, and just be careful. And she kept it a secret every now and then. You know, a couple years passed, she's like, you're not going to tell mommy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said to her, no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt her, you know? Let's talk about Jada. Oh, because really? you thought you were going to hurt her when yes. you got pregnant oh with your God. daughter at 19? Yes, at 18 I at, got pregnant. At with 18. Her. I had her at 19. Mm -hmm. And you had to go and tell her, and you swore that it would be mm -hmm. probably the last thing you could tell her. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, swear, I never tell her, I know. But I swear, I never, I never <laughs> say a thing to her. I dream, she dream it. No, I yeah. I swear, my mother is a prior warrior, so we grew up. She even remember, I remember, <laughs> she said, something happened, and, you know, I feel it, I dream, say, fish and something. So she said to, you know, my sister, my sister at the time, she's, uh, she, well, virgin. <laughs> Um, she got married and lost her virginity, but that's that's how strict we were. So my family, everybody wait decent, everybody marry. wait mm -hmm. until marriage, all of that. So she got to my sister because she's the big one now. So you decide, no, if you wait, uh, what's going on here? I dream about fish. And she's like, no, mm -mm, mommy. It's not me. Man, mm. my other sister, nope, 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 nope. So every minute she's like, what are you going to do? You're going to tell her? I said, no. And then what are you going to do? Hide the belly? <laughs> Where are you going to go? I said, Lord Jesus, no, I prayed. But so you were actually going to Northern not Caribbean. have oh, Jada. Oh, and at the last time, minute you said, I, I... know. I said, no, I changed. Because at one point, I had a couple of friends. I was in college. Um, just got a scholarship for NCU, Northern Caribbean University. And I'm there all happy. I said, no, what am I going to do? I can't lose my scholarship. My mother's so proud. I mean, my father proud. Everybody, what am I going to do? My sister... She is my ride or die. So she's like, Yan, <laughs> I don't know. She's like, Yan, I don't know. You just have to tell mommy. But before that, I remember saying to myself, so no, my friend's like, you don't have to have it. There's abortion. What, what is wrong with you? You know, you don't need to have this. And the strangest thing, I took a morning after pill. So I couldn't understand how, you know, that situation happened. So, but I wasn't experienced anyways. So after mm -hmm. that whole... 
Rape mm -hmm. thing happened years past, and then you now I decided to venture into you know dating and doing that, and then this go happen. I said, boy, I'm really fulfilled. Me can't go down. Me said, no man. So clearly, I know that I must take the pill wrong. I don't know what <laughs> So whichever way, I said to myself, well, this child is here. Because I just mm -hmm. realized my, my, you know, it wasn't coming per month, my menstrual. And I was like, okay, what's going on now? These two months, my fingers swell up every minute, me drop asleep. <laughs> I said, no, man, you know, me feel me pregnant. But anyways, when that happened, I said, all right, then. I listened to my friends. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I remember I scheduled it for Friday. As in Mandeville, and I said, boy, I'm going to make it to Kingston, and I'm going to do what I need to do, and I'm going to come back and, and, and focus and be the best person or not. You know, and then the funniest thing, I remember Friday I was supposed to go to Kingston to sort it out. And I just didn't. I sat there and I rubbed my little belly and I said to myself, for you to be here and for you to be, you know, basically my finger swollen, me dropping asleep, me feel sick. I said, you are basically saying I am here. So for me to really mm -hmm. do that to her, it's not like, you know, I found out some other way. She dear saying I am here. And I started rubbing my belly and I said, you know what, I'm not going to do this, even if it's me one, because I needed to let her know that I am here. You know, I am here. Nobody was there at that 15, but I am here now. I will protect you. So I, I got this. Even if the father not there and even if nothing not happened, I am here. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to her and, you know, rubbing my belly. And I call her her a long time. Me never, mm -hmm. mm -mm. <laughs> Miss Neymar Jada, everything. When the doctor is like, it's a girl. I said, yep, I've been no. So... With that, I mean, I remember her father called on um, Friday evening. Um, I was saying to me, um, I hope you never, whatever. And I said, what? And he's like, you do it? I said, what are you asking me? He's like, because me want you have it. So I just started bawling. He's like, you do it already? I'm sorry. I said, no, no, no. I didn't. I just wanted somebody else to want her mm -hmm. apart from me. And he's like, no, I want her. What, I want her. What a blessing she has Don't. been. And you're a big girl now. Jada is going to be 18. 18. Oh. And he told me that I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I was like, what? But more importantly, mm -hmm. the bond that you have built with oh her. Gosh. Like, I ask you now, like, mm -hmm. now she can look in social media. I ask you how you've protected her mm -hmm. in this era of, you know, Yannick, Curvy, Diva, and, yeah, and exactly. you say you've sheltered her. I don't know how you managed to do I that. Don't. Throughout I'm, high school, you sheltered her in her I friend's circle, her. in your mm -hmm. family circle. It was easier doing it when she's was when she was younger. younger. So, you know, your teachers, everybody, the friends, and who you associate her with, you know, the parents, everybody is on one accord because they're like, all right, this is who I am, entertainer, all of that. You know, and then regardless, I think before that is what, five years now, I'm an artist. So mm -hmm. all of that excitement wasn't happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was it was easy for me to shelter her. But I think the key thing was just always being there in terms of talking to her. Because mm -hmm. I said to her, I'm not going to beat you. You're not an animal. I always say that to her. I say, you're not an animal. I don't need to be beating you or dragging you or doing all of these things. So if I do spank her or, you know, put her in a naughty corner, she'll come back and she'll say, mommy, I deserve it, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, what you mean? And she's like, no, I was really wrong. You know, I never have to trouble it. And you tell me a lot of times not to trouble it, you know. It's all right, mommy. What's <laughs> What's even more instructive to me is the discussion she's having it w with you about you know things mm -hmm. that have happened and how you should have handled it. And mommy, maybe oh, you shouldn't yes. have done that <laughs> and done this. We we'll talk some more about this. This grown-up lady was having a discussion with her mm -hmm. mother uh, right after this break. Soon come. <laughs> So Jan told me when we spoke that a lot of the things that she used to do as an entertainer, she does park it because Jada is older now and it's just not worth it anymore. Um, you you have her in your life. You left her father because you were mm -hmm. in a, an abusive relationship with yeah. her father. Mm -hmm. And you you left that situation um, to go on your own, Jan. And when you went on your own, I didn't know you were on your face, Yannick. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that... I know. It was the lunch tickets at RJR that were feeding you and the food that you were getting on broadcast that I were swear feeding to God. on your daughter. I swear to God. Um, it happened. I'm a very private person. So I wouldn't say to my family, you know, that I'm going through or I have been through anything like that. Or I try not to seem like I failed, you know, as in a relationship for 12 years. And You're I remember... Get married. Yeah, I was, you know, he proposed and everything. I was engaged to him to get married. Um, and I realized when the, the whole abuse started, it started where 
we normally fight. So because I, you know, as there from as 18, I was with him. So after a while at 25, I started changing and I started wanting not, not even say something bad, but I'm, I'm knowing myself now, I'm becoming, you know, the woman that I am. And um, he was just not accepting that. And I remember the love died and he, well, normally said to me, um, you know, you soon find back the love. You soon love me again. And I was <laughs> like, what? We, no, <laughs> no. You know, because he always said, you soon find the love. <laughs> Don't it? You soon find that love, man. Don't worry about it, man. We can get through this. And when I, can't, when I couldn't find the love and all of that and start, you know, be physical or get physical and all of that. And I was like, no, my mother told me, said, no man, no for beat me. But I wish my mom had said, if them beat you, leave. Because mm -hmm. Jamaica have this whole notion where if a man put him hand on you, then you're supposed to lick him back. So in my mind, how I show my strength and that I'm a strong woman is for licking back. So every time is a fight and a fight and we keep going back and forth and any little thing. I mean, it wasn't often, probably once every two mm -hmm. years or mm -hmm. so. So we'd fight and he would say, boy, look what you did to me. And I said, look what, you know, I felt good. Felt like, yo, you know enough to mess with me next time. But uh, that never stopped. But you didn't realize that you were in an mm -hmm. abusive situation no. until the counselor said to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Huh. You felt because you were fighting back, it was right. abuse. So it can't be abuse. I mean, I lick him back. And when the counselor so. said, don't hit him back and see what happens. I thought she was crazy. I was like, what is this woman? Because we went for counselling because we're getting married. So, you know, we had to do counselling. So she's like, when I said to her, we fight every now and then because we did the one-on-one. -on -one. So he was outside. And she's like, fight every now. I said, yeah, him, him test me. I'm a, me fight him. I lick him. So she's like, darling, that is abuse. I said, no, it's not. What do you mean? No man can abuse me. I'm not a victim. No. So she's like, well, all right, okay, Miss Lady, hear what? Don't hit him back. I said, what? She's like, no, man. Anytime, whenever I'm going to fight or anything, you don't put your hands on him. And if him put him hand on you, then what are you going to call that? Abuse, right? I said, of course. It's not a fight. He lit me. So fine. She's like, all right, you practice that. You do that next time. So I said, all right, then this lady boy, I don't even think she's for us. Because <laughs> that's what I'm saying, which counselor is she not for us? Um, she but was I remember. helping you, lady. Right. Um, I Has remember. it happened? It happened. And, and you never looking back? No. And he kept looking at you? And the artist beat never gets it. <laughs> and Yannick, you I said at that God. point, something switched in your head and you went yeah, straight man. to the police station. Yeah, and yeah, you man. were done. Done, I done, I done, done, done. I remember the night when it happened and I said to him, even before it happened, I said to him, say, listen, we're not going to look back, you know, we're not fighting, you know. So he's like, him there fixing himself because him after him, no, me normally fight and tear off shirt and whatever. So him tie him pants properly and him do it. I said, me not like, you know, me just I tell you this. And he's like, all right. And when him decides, I call my sister same time, put the phone. By the time if I call sister, whatever drug from this or drug from, it was very horrible. And um, even through everything, I said to myself, boy, at one point I want to grab him. And I said, no, I'm not mm -hmm. doing it. And he's like, yeah. I said, do your worst, because this will be the last time. And he's like, oh. <laughs> and I remember when it happened in the morning, and Jada was in the house mm -hmm. too. And that was just too much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I You remember, said that's one of the reasons you had to leave, yeah, because man. you had to show her it's not OK yeah, to man, stay. It's not. It's not. Because as I said, my mom would be like, no man, if mm -hmm. put them hand for you. So you know, her thing would be like, yo, Licky Mart, whatever. And when she was there in the room, she was crying out. And she was there crying at the door and saying, I want grandma, I want grandma. She crying and I ran to her. And even though he might try to drag me and whatever, I ran to her and I said to her, I said, you're fine. You're like, no, mommy, no, no, I want grandma. I said, I am here, I am here. And she's like, and she started looking scared. And that fear where she was like, you are not enough. You are not enough, mommy. I am afraid. And I remember grabbing her and I said to her, I said, I am OK. I said, Jada, you, you are right. I have you. And she looked in my face and her father out there making her good behavior. And I said, I have you. I have you. Trust me. You're all right. And I said to myself, because I needed to see this. I needed to see what the counselor said. That this is abuse. Then I need to see it. And I remember the next day I went to the police station. And then I went to the hospital. Did the x-ray. There was blood in my ears. Everything. Oh, yeah. And I said, that's it. And I sent a picture to him. And I said to him that enough is enough. And he's like, no, but, but I fight you. I fight. No. We never fight. We never lick you. He did. I said, stop your foolishness. I said, hear what? Me done. And I remember him saying, um, You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. You're gonna and suffer. I remember him saying that. Him saying, You're going to suffer. You're going to have nothing in your life. Nothing. And the reason why he was saying that, yes, I was on Magnum. 
yes, I was at RGR. Yes, I was doing all of this on TV. So person be like, you have a good job. What's going on? My, I remember every Magnum check that happened. We have a house in Montego Bay. This is my fiance. Mm -hmm. So every check I have, it go to mm -hmm. what's the home. Because it's like, you know, the house is there. It's a big house. It's not like you're contributing much or whatever. So the millions that you get, put it there. I remember at one point I even tried to give my mommy. And I said, my mommy borrowed some money. So he was like, take it back from her. He was like, what? He said, take the money back from your mother and go put it in the house. So I had nothing because all the money was going to the house because we are, a, you know, couple, fiancé. This is how we're doing. We're building a home. One but, day you were proper... Mm -hmm. um, on my face. Well, several days on your mm -hmm. face. On my um, face. You went to church to kind of sit it out. Yeah. You know, in a back bench somewhere, and a lady it's said, Oh, no, feet. not you in the gray. <laughs> what did she say to you that day when she called you? I remember I said to myself, after the dip on my face, everything, I said, Lord, let me go swallow feel. I'm not going to seven day church because um, they're going probably cross about the earring and the nails, and I'm worried too much about too much things. Like, I just want to go somewhere else that is it's not going to criticize me about what I have on or, or anything or makeup. So I went to um, a Sunday church. In the church now, the man started to pray. You know, the whole session, everything happened and preaching and something, I went up. And then um, the guy started to pray. And in praying, somebody interrupted the prayer and said to him, God, have a message. And I'm saying, oh, who did God have a message for now? And I start look around, you know, with the one eye. And I say, who did? So the lady is like, you in the black and white. I say, all right, me I look now for fine. This somebody in at the black and white. And then I say, but me not have a black and white Jesus. I mean, the woman at that. <laughs> and she say, you in the black and white. Yes, you. God have a message. And the woman I close, you know. So mm. I said, then push your seat. And she said, God have a message for you. And she's like, he sees you. He hears you. And I'm like, she's saying you cry to the wall and I remember just bursting out in a church and me just start ball and everybody I want even my niece what she mean you cry to the wall and I remember crying to the wall because my daughter sleep with me non-stop right till she about 15 so she in my bed and because I didn't want her to hear me crying I normally turn my face to the wall and I'll cry to the wall because I don't want her wake up in the night and, and see me crying and when the woman said that, and she said that, God hear you, and he has a plan for you, and you're going to lead, you are going to be greater than this. And I said to myself, Lord Jesus, mm. I remember going through that. Mm. All right, so I think Gloria has been in my ear for like the last two minutes, has she? Yeah. Okay, all right. Some messages for you here, Jan, before we move any further. Go ahead, Laura. Jan, you're one of the strongest persons I know. Your drive, your determination, and your outlook on life is so amazing. And with all this, you make a bigger impact than you realize. Thank you for being the best thing that anyone could ask for as a friend. Your friendship is nothing but an inspiration for me to be happy in life. One thing I love about you, many things I love about you, you are determined. You always say going with love and leading with faith. You're that friend when oh, call our friendship magic school bus. With no engine, just faith. Going through, you're that friend that makes sure that we're all together. Businesswoman, great, you're phenomenal. Independent, 100%. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Yannick, I just want you to know that you are an awesome friend and I really appreciate you being in my life. I really value our friendship you are the epitome of what loyalty means and for me that is very very important and i am very proud of the businesswoman who you are growing into i'm proud of you as a mother i'm proud of you i'm proud of the woman who you are grooming yourself to become i wish you all the success for 2022 and beyond along with your family members and your closest friends, that we adore you, we love you. We're giving you your roses right now while you're here with us. We just want to thank you for all you have done for dancehall, television, and to congratulate you on your new journey, Dining with Curvy. I want to let you know, girl, that I appreciate you and I thank you for letting me be a part of your journey and your life story. I love you, baby girl. Yeni, mwah. I'm so honored to not only be your hairstylist, but to become 
your very friend you are the big sister i never had i love you very much i'm so proud of you you are an inspiration to me um, auntie i just want to say first and foremost i'm proud of all your achievements everything that you've done in your life thus far from your your tv performances to your music videos your music now you know your big restaurants auntie the sky's the limit for you i am so proud of you proud to call you my aunt god bless you and congratulations my baby sis you are my hero there's so much that you have taught me as young as you are and the one thing I take from you is never give up. The leap of faith is what you do. You jump, you leap, you spring off no matter what. You don't see the bottom, but you know at the end of the day, God got you. We all here, we support you. I love the love that you have for your daughter, for your sisters, for your family. And no matter what, you're the baddie, my baddie sister, my entrepreneur, you are loved. And I just thank you. Thank you for being who you are. I love you. And I am immensely proud of you. I'm proud of your strength of character. Girl, the way you persevere, your optimism, the way you strive to find your own rhythm in this life. And even when it knocks you down, you always get back up and ready to fight another day. My hope and prayer for you though, is that as hard as you fight in this life, you will fight even harder to secure your place in the kingdom of God, which I know is possible. I love you, but God loves you even more. So sis, keep striving and never lose that fire in your belly. I am so proud of you. From you were one little bit of scrawny kid growing up, you've always been the sort, look like you were destined for the stage. So it's not surprising that you took to the stage with your dancing and your antics. Yes, all of them things there, we did sure about one thing. You were destined for that. But what has given you great pride is how you're now maturing and you're now moving to another phase of your life. You're now a business owner and you're thinking along that line. Sky's the limit for your girlfriend. And more than anything else, the fact that you're taking control, you have the reins of your own ship and you're moving forward. Happy for you. Happy for you. Mommy would be proud of you too. You can't afford that to buy them. Mommy would be proud of you too. So on behalf of all of we, we're proud of you and congratulations. Mommy, I have so much to say, but I'm going to start by just saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me. Thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for being such an understanding mother who I can come to with almost every and anything in my life. You know, I'm very grateful for all that you've done for me too make me live such a comfortable life. I see all the sacrifices, I see all the hard work. And I just want you to know that I am very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. And I want you to know that you inspire me so much to always try and do my best to make sure that I put my best foot forward with even the smallest of projects in my life. And this is something that you've instilled within me throughout my years of high school and even now coming to work with you. I hear every day, Jada, make sure you start everything with a positive mindset and make sure you always do your best or even try to do your best. I just want to use this moment to let you know that I love you very, very, very much. And I pray that you continue to be the positive, strong, healthy, everything good person that you are and I love you. May God continue to pour out his richest blessings on you. All the best in your future endeavors. I love you more. And I know that for 2022, we're going to make a lot of money. I love you girl. Remember say, when you cook, remember me. All right, God bless.
Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. I, oh, my God. My family. <laughs> Your daughter, though. I don't. Wow. Show herself on TV. Wow, Photo. articulate. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you yes. say it's your work, but she takes credit, right? Oh, I do. I do yes, all the yes. time. All wow. the time. What a blessing. She gave me the title, the best friend title. You know, I've been working for that. I know, I know. It's <laughs> the, isn't it the best thing when they tell you that? I know. You're my best friend. Yes. Love that. I love that for you. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. I wish I had one more word to talk to you, Anik, honestly. When we come back, we just put the lid on the program and do our affirmation. We'll be right back. Wish I had one more hour, but I don't. So I'm going to try and pack it all in in this segment. Yannick says she's at a point now where she doesn't care what anybody says about her. After the whole hullabaloo about your cosmetic surgery, mm -hmm. the whole hullabaloo about your breakup with Marlon, oh, Lord. the hullabaloo about the, the um, I don't know what to call it, what was going on with mm -hmm. yourself and another, mm -hmm. I call her an industry icon because she's yeah. somebody you say you admire and respect mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. um, and all the fallout from that, you just decided, you know, can't bother. I'm going to live my life for me. Yeah, man. And even before that, I mean, just with every trouble and, and, and all the drama and everything that's happened or has happened, um, I think my main thing was always to be positive. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I owed it to myself because at the end of the day, I've been through so much. But for me to give in and to really accept it that, okay, this happened to me and for me to be, you know, broken about it, that means I'm win. It win, the situation won and I am now, you know, face down. But I've always been a fighter. I've always been that person <laughs> where no matter how everybody else can see a way through, I'm always the one to say, hey, if I give a positive energy, positive attitude and look for the best in everything, no matter what, even relationship, friendship, anything, I'll always have that attitude because I just believe that the universe is listening and paying attention. Mm -hmm. God is paying attention to me being kind and loving and it will come back. And you speak yeah. of God because you're, you're not in the SD anymore, but your no. faith is deeply rooted. Yes, I remember one story you told me about... Um, you know, trying to find your prayer warrior in the grill when you're going through something oh, yeah. really tough and you couldn't find her and you yeah, sat in the house thinking, Lord, what next? Mm -hmm. And you said, you heard, you heard a little voice say, mm -hmm. you, know me, you too. know me too. You know me you too. You know me too. And I remember I was calling my girlfriend to call the prayer warrior lady because I, I can't do this. And at times the world, especially growing up Adventist, if you are not Adventist or if you're not a Christian, if you're not following the way of God, then they behave like is you don't know him or you can't talk to him. You know, Christians tend to do that, you know. They, you can't talk to him, it's for them Jesus. So <laughs> if you're not a Christian, yeah. then, you know, you're not going to be able to communicate. And I remember sitting there and I said to myself, you know what, I can't do this, I can't do that. The, the, the staff, you know, the staff vehicle, the crash, and, and the staff calling me and saying, Miss Barrett, this happened and who's screaming? And I'm here in the middle of everything. And I'm saying to myself, I have nobody to call. I know my brother, him, you know, it late, all of these things. I don't want to frighten him because I am the queen of being independent. Do you probably wonder why I don't call on a couple of family members? I believe I'm, I have, I'm going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember saying to myself, Lord, I can't. So when he said that to me, I said, okay, you're right, I do. And I remember going to my room and drop on my knees. And this was just last year, 2021. And I drop on my knees as I go into a relationship where I just broke up with a person and the person wouldn't stop. And I realized Jamaica tend to have that thing where, you know, they try to go public with your business. I'm very private. Mm -hmm. So the person is going public and they're trying to spread rumor and they say them buy me this and them take it back and all sorts of foolishness and trying to target me being my, you know, being independent. And I hated that. And even the person was calling and saying, this happened to you and, you know, I go down, da 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 And I'm saying to myself, I went in that room. I dropped on my knees and I said to myself, Lord, and I start praying. And let me tell you, I bawled out to him and I said, I am not worthy. And that's the first thing I went with. I said, I am not worthy. I am not deserving of your love, of your grace. And I'm coming to you through my mother. Mm. And that is how I said, I'm coming to you through my mother. She is here. She's with me. And she is here begging you to have mercy, to take care of the staff, take control of the situation. And I remember praying and then I started saying thank you. And from then, I started 2022 saying thank you because I just start thanking in advance. In advance. You are going to work Amen. it all. Thank you. So um, 
This year is the year of thank you. I'm going to do our affirmation, but you, what do you want people to take away from this program? You say you feel misunderstood, sometimes deliberately, sometimes not so. A lot of what time. do you want people to walk away from this program, about who you are? Um, I want them to know I'm a strong, beautiful woman. But more importantly, that at the end of the day, just to have a positive attitude about anything that you put your mind to. You can accomplish anything that is happening in your life. It's never to the point where you can't overcome. And once you know that God is in control and you're in control, the universe is going to bless you. Never think that something that you're going through is too much to handle. And that was always my situation, no matter what. Even when it happened to me at 15, I was still smiling. I still believe in love. I still i am open to mm -hmm. love, you know, and everything. That is it. Think positive. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And don't believe the foolishness on Instagram. But I'm going to talk more. I think that is the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't talk. So when the public come and they make up stories and I don't defend myself, I don't talk. I'm very private. They don't have anything to stand on. So, so they make stuff up. So they make stuff up. Well, I'm glad you talked yes. today. Uh, what an Thank honor you. to have you like talk to us for the first time like oh, this. I really, oh it's a blessing. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Jan. It's affirmation time, everybody. Oh, gosh. Boy, let me tell you, we often see people up close and we never realize how closed up or closed off they are and why. And so we judge because why not, right? Well, it's important to remember that our journeys are all unique, but very much the same. I mean, there may be differences in the details, but sometimes the only change is in the name. So sometimes when you think you know the story behind the face, pause and give that person some grace. The same grace you'd want to be given to you if people knew half the things that you've been through and how you've used those things to change your future for the better because what has happened in the past is done and now it doesn't matter. May you give grace to others, but especially to yourself when it comes to self-care, because that is top shelf. Tonight we are affirming, in my life and on my journey, God alone is judge and jury. And that is our soul food and our show for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. To Grace, the VM Group and Flo for helping us share these stories and change lives. And we're doing it again next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing and please remember to count your blessings. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.